Um, how many of you guys have ever heard of a guy <clears throat> named Derek? He's a, sort of a, a little bit of a myth within the RSD community. <clears throat> he's, he's a bit of a legend. He's not an RSD instructor, but he's someone we know well and who's been a mentor to a lot of us. <clears throat> and he has a phrase he likes to say. He says, if I approach 20 girls, I don't care if 19 of them fucking hate me, <clears throat> as long as the 20th one thinks that I walk on water. All right? He doesn't care to have girls a little bit into him. He doesn't care to have girls, oh, so, so, maybe I'll tolerate him. He wants that girl who's just decided, this is the guy I want and I'll do anything for him. Right? And then that girl becomes a relationship for years or becomes the girl that you have in whatever, you know, whatever type of relationship you want, she'll do anything for you, et cetera, et cetera. And if you were to go out enough nights, you have an unlimited supply of super hot girls that are like 100% into you. That's what you want. You don't want a bunch of girls that are 80% into you, because why? Why waste your time with that, okay? Again, play to win as opposed to playing to not lose, right? And that's one of the biggest things that holds people back, playing to not lose. If you think about it, almost every failure to escalate, almost every common sticking point in game is playing to not lose or playing it safe. For example, if you don't approach the girl, what are you doing? You're playing it safe. You're avoiding a rejection. You're avoiding that moment that feels a little bit bad, right? Now, inherently, this is illogical because if you don't talk to her, you're never going to see her again. If you do talk to her and she blows you out, you're still never going to see her again. So the worst has already happened. But that said, most guys won't do it because of it will hurt their emotions, et cetera, right? Same thing with failure to kiss, uh, failure to ask for a number. Um, how many people have done this one? This is a very common one that makes no sense. How many people have ever gotten a girl's phone number that you, you liked her and then you never called her and never texted her? Has that ever happened? Makes so much sense. It makes so much sense to do that. But most people have done I've done it. I've done it too. Right? Why? Because in the moment, the set felt so good. Like, oh yeah, I had this great set with this hot girl. I'm the man. I feel good about myself. And then when you text her and she doesn't text back, you're like, oh, fuck. I guess I'm not that cool. I guess I'm not that cool. Right? And because of that, you don't want to do it. Again, you're playing to not lose. You're playing to not have a bad emotion, to not have a bad feeling, to maintain your state, to maintain your self-confidence, not to actually get the win. Okay? You need to play to win. Okay, so if you were to look at all of the RSD instructors, you might notice we're a bit different. You might notice we all have kind of different personalities. Right? Um, you have a guy like Max, who's like super popular, around smiling all the time, like bubbling and jumping with energy. Right? It's all kind of awesome. Then you might have a guy like Jeff who's like brooding and negative, he's like fuck off, get more girls, right? He just has his like whatever. But he's very like verbally clever and he has a very sort of like polarizing personality where like, you know, it's either take it or leave it. Uh, and then on the other side of that, you have a guy like Brad who's like very, you know, positive and uplifting and narcissistic and like all about self love. And then you have Julian who's like just joking around and then you have me who's like, you know, it's like diffusing a bomb when I do game. Right? So we all have our different styles. <laughs> How is it that we can have such different styles and yet we can all be so very effective? Well, the difference is that um, we have done sort of what you implied, which is we've taken certain elements of our personality, we've kept them and maybe maximized them, and then there are other elements that are uh, not so good that we've sort of like eliminated or we've, we've sort of turned around. Right? And so the core principles of game are the same for everybody. Right? But the personality, very different. Like for me, for example, I am not a super extrovert. I am a natural introvert. I, even to this day, I can, you know, I can command a room, I can talk, I can make shit up for hours on end. Um, I can, if I'm in a set, I can make four or five girls laugh for quite a long time consecutively if I have to. But all of that sort of takes energy for me. It's not the most natural thing for me to do. And I sort, of, I sort of avoid it. Like I, like, I try and avoid the idea of other people. I, I consider it like sort of like sucking on my energy. I try and avoid that. I prefer one-on-one -on -one conversations. And I prefer like um, to, to really get deep with, with one person. Right? So that's what I'm naturally good at. So I've created a game plan where I maximize that. I've created a game plan where I spend most of my time in set talking one-on-one -on -one to the girl I'm into. I've created a game plan where I isolate very quickly. I talk to the group for just a little bit, but very soon I get the girl on her own. Um, I like to sit down with the girls. I do not like going on the dance floor, uh, especially with a group of girls. 
I'll go on the dance floor with one girl, but going on the dance floor with a group of girls, like even on a really good set, I will consider that like game over for me personally. <laughs> that actually happened to me uh, last week in Amsterdam. I had a girl that uh, I was uh, I was basically making out with within two or three minutes of meeting her. She was all over me. She was chasing me. Uh, and it looked super good. I actually almost pulled her. I was like this close to walking her out the door, but she's like, no, 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 I, I'm worried about my friends. I have to go back to my friends. So I couldn't get, her to, couldn't get her to go. I had to go back and see the friends. It was okay for a little bit, and then the friends took her up on the dance floor like all together. And as soon as that happened, I was looking at it, and it was like five girls, dance floor, me, the girl. I hated it too much. I couldn't, like, I... <laughs> it's partly because I can't dance. It's partly because I don't like the situation. So I, I, can, I can dance a little. I can dance like if the girl's touching me, I can dance. Right? As soon as there's any space between us, I can't dance anymore. Like if, she, if she's feeling my body, that's fine. If she's seeing my body, it's a problem. That's, that's how it goes. Um, but the, the, the big issue with dancing with the group, though, for me, is that I have two choices. I don't like either one. One choice is dance closely with the girl that I'm talking to and get her like, turned on and aroused. But the problem is the friends will probably hate me. The other option is dance with everybody, and in that case, especially in this particular interaction where it had been very high energy and very like sexually on, it's only going to make the interaction go negative. It's only going to make the interaction go worse and worse. Right? So in this situation, I tried a few times to, to change the environment, tried to move her around. It was impossible, and so I ended up actually just bouncing out of the set, even a set that had been that good, which on one level is sort of giving up. On another level, it's having abundance, because I know that I can get another set to really like me, and I know that like, having a girl into me is not that rare. So it goes both ways. Um, little side note to that is uh, two nights later, just completely at random in the entire city of Amsterdam, that same girl found me in another club and like, came up to me and was like, all super like, into me. So it worked out in that sense. But, um, but yeah, it was one of those situations where it was, it was a situation where for some guys' blueprint, for some guys' game style, it even might have been ideal. Like a guy who's very outgoing, who is good at dancing, who enjoys dancing, that could be an ideal situation for them. For me and my game style, it's actually a very almost like almost unwinnable situation, if that makes sense, right? And so that's a difference in game style. That same person, however, that's really good on the dance floor and outgoing, they might be good there, but then if they were sitting in a quiet room or a qu like a quiet, maybe like a coffee shop with a group of girls, they might not be able to handle it at all. Whereas for me, that's like, you know, that's like a layup, right? That's super, super easy. So everybody has a different style of game. Everybody has their own talents and what they're best at. And what you want to do is cater to your talents, right? You want to create situations where your talents matter and create situations where your, tal your, your, your liabilities, the things you do poorly, don't matter. So you want to orchestrate that. <laughs> but fundamentally, again, you have to do the core concepts of game. And what are the core concepts of game? Of course, the core concept of game, number one, be a cool, high-value guy. Right? Core concept is that. Course concept number two, take action and get the girl on the girl's radar. Make sure she knows that you're a cool, high-value guy. Core concept number three, escalate. Move the interaction forward. All right? Everybody's game contains those three elements. There is nobody, I, I, I would take bets on this, there is nobody on the planet whose game is really good who doesn't do those things. All right? they, do, they aren't a cool person in some way. They don't have some kind of engaging characteristics to them. Uh, they get on the girl's radar in some way, and um, they move the interaction forward. If they don't do those three things, they don't have good game, period, always. Okay? So those are the fundamentals. Now, if what you're doing interferes with one of those three fundamentals, you're fucked, basically. right? Then you need to get rid of what it is you're doing that interferes. If what you're doing does not interfere with that, then what you need to do is maximize your unique characteristic and figure out the best way to make it work. Okay? So <laughs> if you are, um, I don't know, like super, super, super nerdy, right? Most guys have the impression like super nerdy doesn't work in game. And to a sense, it, to a certain degree, it doesn't because super nerdy tends to be very introverted, tends to be something you do by yourself. However, there are a lot of circumstances in which super nerdy can work, right? Um, one kind of fucked up situation would be, say, you're a college professor and she's a college student, mm -hmm. right? That's just one example. I'm not saying that's the one you should pursue. But being nerdy and having information is a source of value. The smaller, more like usable example of that is if you are an intelligent person, then you might take a teaching frame. 
you might take the frame of, I have this information, you don't, I will teach you. And through the act of teaching, you're now in a position of value relative to her. Right? Does that make sense? So that's one way to use that to your advantage. Right? Um, if you happen to be like obviously talented in like music or sports, obviously doing those kind of things in a forum where girls see you do them is a very valuable thing. You should utilize that and maximize it. Right? Whatever your particular talents are, utilize them, maximize them. Whatever your talents, whatever your liabilities are, minimize them. So if you're um, like super nerdy and in your head, how do you minimize that? Well, what you probably don't do is put yourself in front of the girl in situations where um, you're supposed to be very like illogical and all over the place, right? So for example, for me, my, my example of that is I don't dance with groups of girls. That's like a, a, a line I will draw, right? Now, if the girl's so into me that she'll dance in front of her friends and say, fuck the friends, I don't care, I'm still dancing with him, then I'll do it. But if that's not the case, typically I will cut that and I will move on because I'm not good at that particular interaction. I'm not good at it. I'm better off getting another girl in a different situation just with my skill set. The other solution, by the way, and this is something I may pursue at some point, in fact, it's kind of egregious that I haven't, would be to actually learn to dance, right? If I were to actually learn to dance well, then I could manage that better. Oh, and the other thing would be to learn to enjoy dancing, right? And for me to learn to enjoy dancing, what that would mean, fortunately, if I, if I learned to dance well, I probably would start to enjoy it because I tend to like the things I'm good at. That's my personality. Right? So those would be the two things I would need to do if I wanted to be better at that situation. Right? Become good at dancing and enjoy it, which means I'd have to like, you know, um, like enjoy the technique. I'd probably need to like feel, figure out how to feel the beat of the music, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right? So not what I'm good at. Um, another example, though, might be uh, someone who is very good at being very social and being very like outgoing, <clears throat> they might try and have as much of the interaction as possible with their friends, with her friends, etc. Right? So if you're super social, you're the head of a social group, but you're not so good one-on-one, -on -one, maybe invite the girl out with you and your friends, have the date start that way, and then split off from her later. Right? And that's actually a decent technique. So for every set of... Um, <clears throat> For every set of talents you have, there's a way to maximize. For every set of talents or liabilities you have, there's a way to minimize and correct. Okay, so that's what you want to look to do in general. Um, but again, what are the three core fundamentals? Who can, who can repeat what they are? What are the three fundamental things that game must be? <clears throat> cool vibe. Cool high value vibe. What else? Get on our radar. What else? Escalate. Right? Those three must be the case. So look at your own game. For everybody in here, look at your game. Think to yourself. Do I have a cool vibe? And by the way, it doesn't, mean, doesn't have to mean you're the coolest person in the world, but is there a situation, is there a circumstance where I have a really cool vibe? Like when I'm doing certain things, when I'm happy, when I'm in my element, when am I coolest, when am I best? Right? Where can I convey a cool vibe? Right? Ideally, it's best to interact with people in general and also obviously with girls in circumstances where you're happy and having fun. Right? So find the place where you're coolest. Do you get on the girl's radar? If the thing that you do for happy and fun is playing video games on your couch, you're not going to be on a lot of girls' radar. So that's a fundamental problem. You might want to find something you enjoy doing that's more public and social, right? Or you need to find some way to like, have girls over, like have a party while you're playing video games. I guess that could work too, right? But you need to find a solution that meets that criteria. And then if you're not escalating, thanks, I'll take it. If you're not escalating, obviously, you need to find a way to escalate, and mostly that comes down to having balls. How persistent should you be? How much should you persist in game? Well, uh, I can look at it a couple different ways. Um, one way of looking at it is if you look at the particular interaction. If you look at, if you're on a desert island with a girl, there's one girl and one guy on the desert islands, and you're going to be there for the rest of your life. If you initially try and pick her up and she resists, how many times should you escalate? At what point should you just like say, fuck it, I'm not going to reproduce? She dies. <laughs> yeah, basically until she dies, right? <laughs> until you die or she dies. That's pretty much it because you have no other options, right? So in that circumstance where it's this girl or nothing, you pretty much should keep reapproaching and reapproaching and reapproaching. Uh, what is it they, they say? Um, I, I forget what movie it is. It's like call and call. It's a sales movie. Like call and call and call until they buy or die. Right? <laughs> that's the idea. Yeah, in that case, that's pretty much what you should have. Is that Wolf of Wall Street, I think? I don't know. But anyway, call and call till they buy or die. However, 
in a situation where there are seven billion girls on the planet, and if one girl rejects you, you could go talk to another girl, how persistent should you be there? Well, certainly less persistent. Certainly less persistent. Now, that's going to come down to a variety of factors. And in that case, um, for the very analytical among us, um, what I look at is um, a concept, it's a poker concept, but I use it as a life concept. It's called expected value. And for me, if I'm going to go out in a particular night, I'm going to go random city, particular night, and I'm going to go out and like, I'm going to go hard, I'm going to hit it up, I'm going to do a lot of sets, I'm going to try and pull. For me, at my current skill level, I would say that my odds of pulling, I loosely is about an 80% chance that I'll pull in, like what I'd consider an eight. Right? So pretty hot girl, maybe not a 10, but a hot girl, I'm going to pull the vast majority of the time if I really hit it hard and I go into the bitter end until I pull. So if that's the case, and I'm talking to a girl who's like a seven and a half, and she's giving me any kind of bullshit at all, what should I do? Anybody, what should I do? Leave. Leave. Right? I should leave. One guy knows. <laughs> Nobody else can figure it out. Right? On the other hand, if I'm talking to a girl who's a nine and it's going really, really well, and I've been talking to her for 45 minutes, and she gives me like one shit test, what should I do? Stay, Stay and pass the shit test. Right? Because if I pass that, like, first of all, she's hotter than my average standard, right? So it's worth going for, especially because I really I care more about quality than quantity personally. So she's higher than the average standard. I've already put in a decent amount of time. Overall, the interaction is way more good than bad. So in this case, it's worth it to stick in, try and pass the shit test, try and be a little bit more persistent, uh, because my expected value in the set is greater than my expected value in the rest of the night. Does that make sense? So that's what I really look for in terms of persistence. Um, however, there's one other key element, which is persistence of doing what? Okay? If the first time that you approach the girl, she rejects you, and you're super obnoxious, and you punish the girl verbally, <laughs> and you tell her that, like, you know, I've actually done this, interestingly enough. I'll do this, I, I don't do this very often. Uh, but I will do it in extreme cases. Uh, I've, I'll basically do it if a girl's being really mean to a student. Like if I'm on boot camp and a girl's being extremely mean to one of my boot camp students, like especially if it's a really nice guy, um, I'll go in and I'll just like just like whiplash the girl with my words. Um, and it's funny too. Sometimes sometimes it ends really well. Sometimes it ends really badly. Um, I remember one time I was in Austin, Texas, and this girl was really super mean to one of my boot camp students. So I chased her down and like, um, actually it wasn't even like, the girl he was talking to was fine. It was the girl's friend. It was like pushing him and shoving him. And I went back in and just like, just, just went off on her. And eventually I was like, look, you are not special because you have a vagina. You do not get to get away with shit. Like, and it was like super loud and super like fucking, uh. And there was like a, basically a crowd of people on the street, they're just staring in sun, stunned silence at like what was going. Like, and then I'm like, "Don't fucking do that ever again. I'm done with you." And I walked away. I was like stunned silence. And then about like half a second later, like there was like applause from the circle. <laughs> I was like, "Yes, that's right." That said, there are also times when I've tried that shit, and then the girl runs to a bouncer and tries to get me thrown out of a club. So it's not the smartest thing in the world, right? There are consequences to these sort of things too, and I don't recommend doing them often. Um, but for example, if, if the first time you'd gone that far with it, you probably should not approach a second time. It's just a thought. But if the first time you say, hey, what's up? And she's like, oh, not interested. And you're like, okay, fine, on with your night. And then you see her half an hour later when she looks like she's in a fun mood, you know, maybe not with like her friends that she was busy with again. Then you go like, hey, what's up? I saw you earlier, da, da, da. Or, hey, what's up? How you doing? Or, oh my God, I missed you. Or, oh shit, I hate you. Whatever. You could open her again, right? So part of it is, What's your expected value in the night? And then part of it is, how bad was the rejection? Right? If the rejection was so bad that it's like, you know, if you approach again, there's a good chance of like physical violence, probably shouldn't go back in. Right? But if it was just some like little soft thing, why not? Right? The other thing though, um, don't let the idea of approaching later be enough of a, a factor in your mind that you don't do the approach correctly at that moment. A lot of guys, they'll like take the rejection, they go, oh, I'll just approach her later. When what they should actually do is do a better job right now. Okay? Um, here's an example. I don't know, I haven't been out in, uh, in Munich so far. This is going to be my first night right now. But um, in New York and LA and Miami, for example, they have a lot of nightclubs where around the nightclub they have like kind of the, the velvet rope and the bouncer with the list and all that kind of stuff, right? And there's a guy, you walk up to that club 
and they, they say, are you on the guest list? And what do most guys do? No, sorry, bye. I suck at life and I don't deserve to be in this club, right? And obviously they don't get into the club. However, what you should do, they say, are you in the guest list? I'm like, no, it's just me. It never worked. We tried it. Never worked? <laughs> <laughs> Works for me every time. Works for me. Sometimes you have to be a little bit more persistent and sometimes like, they'll be like, no, no, sorry. Then you have to like, come up with an angle or come up with something like that. Like I, I remember one time um, in, in London, Yuri actually is really good at this. Um, he basically was like, yeah, I know we're all from you know, LA and Vegas. We're just in town for some film stuff. Can you, can you hook us up? Is there something you can do? Yeah. Et cetera. He's like, you have to talk to this guy. Okay, fine. Calls him over. Hey, this, we we're just talking to him. He said you could you know, hook us up, et cetera. Right? And we point it over to him, and he like, kind of nods. Right? And so it looks as though we had like, the, his, his refer, like, referral, I guess. Um, and so you kind of have to work it a little bit. But if you're, if you're persistent, a lot of times you can get in. And the quicker point I was making is that a lot of times even one try is enough. Sometimes you do have to be creative, try two or three times. <clears throat> you have to call in a guest list. It also helps if you know somebody's name or you know information about the club. But the point is, a lot of times just saying it's just us or saying, no, 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 we're not, but um, we're here, what can we do? That kind of thing. Asking a second time is massively valuable. And a lot of times they'll be like, yeah, sure, come right in. Okay? Same kind of thing with a girl. A lot of times if you open the girl and she's like, no, 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 not interested, and you're just like, okay, obviously you're not getting that girl. But, however, if you're like, hey, what's up? And she's like, no, 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 I'd be like, hey, no, 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 hi. It's Todd, nice to meet you. Right? So, oh, shit, that's different. Who is this guy? He seems to think he should be meeting me, right? i like, hey, no, 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 two seconds, you, come here, come here, right? She's like, oh, okay, I guess, I guess it's okay, because he seems to think it's okay. He seems entitled, he seems assured. So if you seem entitled and assured, a lot of times you can turn around to what is that sort of like inherently bad situation and make it a good one. And this is particularly important with the hottest girls, because the hottest girls get approached a lot, right? There's this myth that hot girls don't get approached, that's bullshit, okay? <laughs> Hot girls get approached, right? Everybody says like, oh, the sevens get approached, the tens don't get approached. That's bullshit. However, the sevens get approached well more often than the tens get approached well, perhaps, okay? Because most guys can't approach a ten the right way. So tens have this natural inclination to, oh, no, 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 thank you, oh, I'm good, whatever, right? But if you actually like slam into reality and say, no, 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 hey, I know that's the answer for like normal guys, but between you and I, Right? If you say that, a lot of times she'll come around very quickly. Right? Sometimes she won't. But regardless, it was a lost situation anyway. So you may as well try. And at the very least, she'll respect you. And at the very least, you'll respect yourself. Because you know you tried and you know that she may have rejected you, but you didn't reject you. And that's very, very important as well for sort of your self-esteem and, and your long-term confidence. So that, that's that's. <clears throat> Sorry, critical as well. Good game should be assured, and good game should sort of like take the uh, the frame of I've been there before, right? It's like um, let's give an example. You guys know. So um, if uh, Miroslav Klose scores a goal, for those of you who know, how, how 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 shocking is that? Is it shocking that he scored? Not at all. You're like, oh yeah, he scored again. Okay, cool, whatever, all right? If um, shit, um, who's the Goalkeeper. If he scores a goal, right? <laughs> huh? Yeah, Manuel Neuer. Yeah. If he scores a goal, that's like headline news, right? <laughs> right. And it could happen. You know, end of the day, like last 30 seconds, he goes up in the penalty box, scores a goal. That could happen, right? Whatever. Headline news. Why? Because he hasn't been there before. It's a big deal for him. In game, that's not a good thing. In game, if the girl senses that. Um, that, that you haven't been there before, you haven't been with a lot of girls, that's conveying not such a cool guy, um, <coughs> not pre-selected, et cetera, and that can actually hurt you. So when you get a girl back to your place, if you immediately like jump on her and start trying to escalate right then and there, a lot of times you'll lose it. A lot of times you'll take a set that was really good, she loved you, came all the way back to your place, all of a sudden you're like, oh, no, 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 this guy's needy? Oh, never mind. Oh, no, 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 this guy isn't in it to have a great experience with me. He's just in it for an outcome, right? He's in it to, like, put another notch on his bedpost. He's in it for, like, the victory. Then that's a huge turn off. If you're in it for the experience, it's a huge turn on. And so that's the downside of massive libido. Is that a lot of guys, they get too much libido or they get too much sort of, like, arousal and sort of, like, they get sort of, um, like, tunnel vision for the girl and they move too quickly. This is actually what happens to a lot of guys when they get really drunk, 
right? A lot of guys, their game in a way gets better when they're drunk because they lose their inhibitions and they get like a, a less attractive girl looks more attractive to them. <laughs> so like they have more intent, right? So in that sense, it makes their game a lot better. But what happens is in the end they get sloppy, right? Because they have all this intent and not a lot of control and not a lot of thought about it. And so a lot of times they'll mess it up as well, right? So it's pros and cons of showing intent. Um, so limiting belief versus character. <clears throat> I think it's, it's very important, in fact, fundamental to success in life to understand reality. If you don't have a grip on reality, you're going to make a lot of bad mistakes. You're going to make a lot of big errors, et cetera, right? However, um, understand that reality is alterable. What is true now will not necessarily always be true. Okay, so I think that it's a good idea to play to your current strengths, but it's also a good idea to learn and grow and take your weaknesses and turn them into strengths, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so um, for example, uh, well, I, used to, I used to play soccer as a kid um, and I was a very right-footed player. Right? I, was, I learned to kick with my right foot first. So now I could say I'm a right-footed player and just never, ever kick a ball with my left foot. Right? And actually in the short term, because my left foot was so bad, that probably would have been like the better way to play game by game. But once you get to a certain level, you have to learn to you know, use that other foot. You have to learn to manage it. Otherwise, you're just always going to be a terrible player. Right? And so it's the same thing with saying things like I'm introverted or I'm, I'm not, I wouldn't say shy anymore, but like a little bit introverted. So. <clears throat> On the one hand, um, I recognize who I am currently, and when I go out on a particular night, I'm going to utilize my strengths and minimize my weaknesses. But also, what else did I say when I was talking about the dance thing? Is like, what should I do? Learn to fucking dance, right? That's the other thing is fundamentally on the long run, change and improve. And understand that you are very plastic. You're very moldable. You're very malleable. You can, you can change. You can grow. So you want to be doing both at once. On the short-term basis, do what you can right now and try and get the result right now. On the long-term basis, think about what would be perfect or what you'd like to grow into or what you aspire to and create that in the long term. So I think there's always a balance. And <clears throat> there are times when you want to be in a winning mentality and times you want to be in a learning mentality. So for example, say that I'm out um, at a really amazing club and I'm talking to a girl who I think is a fucking like 10 out of 10. Full on, 10 out of 10, love her, I think she's hot, love her personality, I'm super turned on by her. In that moment, do I want to play to win right now or do I want to play to learn? What do you think? Play to, play to win right now. Right? I'm just going to do the absolute most I can to play my best game and just let it be what it is in that moment. And I would argue that even that's the best learning as well because if, I have, if whatever I'm going to learn from that interaction will probably be good lessons for playing at a high level. And also, if I have sex with her, that entitlement will probably fuel my self-confidence and help me in the long run as well, more than any specific technique might even do. However, on the other hand, let's say I'm out some random night, and I'm talking to a girl who's a seven, and she's like silly and kind of fun and cute or whatever, but like I'm not like super into her, right? At that moment, and say it's early in the night, I could do a lot of things. Do I want to play to win right there, or do I want to play to like learn and fuck around and like try and be who I can be? In that circumstance, I'm more likely to want to play to learn, right? I'm more likely to, to try and increase and improve who I am. And so there's always a balance. There's always a balance between doing the best right now and doing the best in the long term, right? And so um, that's sort of my, I guess, my answer to that question. Yeah, I was, I was curious, how do you know that you're really a uh, natural introvert? Because Tyler said, uh, said in a video mm -hmm. um, the same about himself. I mean, mm -hmm. I get it that you're maybe with, uh, because I think uh, for, a, especially for a beginner, mm -hmm. you could just say, yeah, I'm a natural introvert. I'm not doing that right now. It's like just, it's, yeah, it's not so good for me. Mm -hmm. um, Todd said, uh, he's not doing it. I'm not doing it. So. <laughs> right, right, right. So that's, that's an interesting one too. And that is to ask yourself why. Really, be, that's, that comes down to being honest with yourself, really. <clears throat> so it's very easy to say, I'm not doing that because it's not my character. Whereas what you really mean is, I'm not doing that because it feels kind of bad. Right? Like, for example, for the first 18 years of my life, it was in my character not to do a cold approach. Right? So they'd be like, I'm a natural not cold approacher. It's just my personality, all right? I'm a non cold approacher, which means I'm a, I'm a natural virgin. You know, I was born a virgin, I've been a virgin for 18 years, I'm just going to stay a virgin. Why not? All right? Um, 
Why? Because it's harder to do the approach. So you just have to be really honest with yourself. And that's, that comes down to having a grasp on reality as well, but also having a grasp on your emotions. Whenever you don't want to do something, ask yourself if you don't want to do it because you think it's stupid, like you actually legitimately think it's a bad idea, or ask yourself if it just feels kind of bad. And if the answer is it just feels kind of bad, go do it. Right? In fact, even if you think it's a little stupid, but it also feels kind of bad, and you think that you'll grow from that, go do it anyway. Okay? So the big thing is actually like, you know, be honest with yourself on those kind of things. Right? Um, yeah, for example, I, t I tell students on boot camp all the time, like, ask me lots of questions, et cetera. But if I say go talk to that girl right over there, that's not the time to ask me a question because I know what the fuck it means, right? It's not like, oh, I want to learn. That's my, that my motivation. No, that's I want to hide from the pain. All right, so just be honest with yourself. Be honest with yourself on that kind of stuff. Um, be honest with yourself. If you see that, that really hot girl and you like, want to go approach her and then you see like, she has like, a freckle out of place, you're like, oh, she has a weird freckle. Never mind. She's not that hot. I won't approach her. What are you really saying? You're saying, oh, shit, I'm scared. It's easier not to approach. So make yourself go fucking do it. Right? If, on the other hand, she turns around and has like, hideous acne and like, half her hair fell out, then in that case, you're like, OK, fine. You know what? In that case, I don't have to do it. Right? So be honest with yourself. Right? And that's what it really comes down to as well. Um, OK, let's talk about killer instinct versus neediness. And this is, this is tough. This is a tough one to, to grasp intellectually. And this is a tough, a tough balance to find. Um, what this really comes down to is why are you doing what you're doing? Right? If things are coming from the right place, they're not needy. If things are coming from the wrong place, they are needy. So if you want to play to win, if you want to go pick up the girl and have sex with a girl in order to prove to yourself that you're a real man, almost by nature, no matter what you do, it's going to come off very, very needy. Right? And it's going to come off very, very creepy. And so when you have intent from that place, it's not going to work very well. However, if your intent is, I want to have as much fun as possible tonight, and I'm going to try and create as much fun for the people around me, and you happen to know that having sex is fun, right? and you want to have sex for the joy and the experience of having sex, then in that case, you can be, have killer instincts, you can be persistent, etc., without it being needy. So it really depends where is it coming from. Okay? Um, when I was first getting into game, I had very little confidence with women. I was good at a lot of things. I've been good at school, good at sports, not so good with girls. And so for me, when I was approaching girls, at that point in my pickup career, or in, in my life, I guess, um, when I was approaching a girl, I didn't even really want to get laid, right? to be fair. I mean, I did kind of want to get laid, because getting laid would have proven something to me. But what I wanted more than anything else was to prove to myself that I was good with girls. I wanted to get some validation. I wanted to get some compliments. I wanted to know that I could have gotten laid. Right? And so what I did was I would, uh, for actually for the first 18 years of my life, whenever I liked a girl, I would try and make her like me. And then as soon as I was pretty sure she liked me, I'd just be done with it so I didn't have to risk rejection. <laughs> right? I did this. I actually had, I can tell you some of the worst stories. I had this girl in my Spanish class that like, I had a crush on. And um, I got to the point where like, I, was, I, I moved my seat, got over sitting next to where we flirted, and she started write, writing like her name with hearts in my, my book and like playing like with my foot under the table and like cuddling up to me and stuff like that. And then I never asked her out. Did all this work to get her into me? Never asked her out. Right? Pussy, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it gets worse. It gets worse. You want another story? So I had a, I had a class on board games, which Thank God. Like, what, a, what a good class, actually. Class on board games in middle school. But anyway, there was this one particular, huh? Board games, chess? Or? All board games. Like any and all board games. Yeah. So uh, yeah, Go, Othello, chess, checkers, anything. Um, so there was this one particular board game. And I beat everybody in the class at it, except for this one girl beat me. And to be fair, she got a little lucky. Like, cause <laughs> she did. She did. She got a little lucky. But I beat everybody, and then she beat me. But I was really pissed off. And I couldn't figure out why she beat me either. So part of it was I was pissed off she beat me. Part of it was like I really wanted to figure it out. Um, and then also she was the hottest girl in the class. So that helped as well. <laughs> so I got determined. And I went and I found a book on this game 
I read the entire book, figured out all the strategies, figured out why she'd beaten me, and then I figured out like, you know, I was already like probably the best in the class already. I got like, if, if, she, if she was here, I was here and she beat me, I got to like here. Like I got fucking good at this game. I went back and like decimated her. Like it was, it was like so bad she like almost cried. <laughs> like it was, <laughs> it was bad, right? Uh, and then we'd already been flirting a little bit and I think she was, I think she was impressed a little bit. Um, I was not a gracious winner. Um, but anyway, she then got a friend of hers to call me up and ask me out on her behalf. Because this is middle school and people can't, the girl can't ask a guy out for them, whatever. And so I, I actually had a crush on this girl. I tried to make her like me. Her friend asked me out for her. And I was like, well, uh, I'm not really sure. Let me think about it. And then like two hours later, she called back. She's like, offers off the table and hangs up. <laughs> right? Um, but again, it's basically there for me. I did all this work to get the girl like me. She actually asked me out, and then I ran away from it. Last example, this is in high school. Um, I'm in drama class, and uh, this girl comes, a cute girl comes over to me, like rubs my leg and whispers in my ear, I think you're super hot. <laughs> and my response was, I need to go grab a drink of water. And I went off to go to that. This is how much I didn't want to win. Okay, my motivation, and it, 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 it seems stupid, and actually it is stupid, but my motivation was not to get laid. My motivation wasn't to have sex. To be fair, as a kid, I was actually, this is a big sticking point I had, I was actually scared of sex as a kid, right? I had a, in middle school, um, we had a class on sexually transmitted diseases and all that, and it scared the fuck out of me. <laughs> like, it was really, really scary. The teacher was super, like, scary. Um, and so I was actually, like, a little bit afraid of having sex, too, um, which... I've, I've gotten past that now, <laughs> many, many times. Um, but in any case, I didn't even want to have sex, but what I wanted was to prove to myself I could, and that was my main motivation. And that's why for the first, even once I started doing cold approach, for nine months, I would go out and I'd go on dates. I probably went on dates that I couldn't even afford as a college kid, weekend after weekend. I had one to two dates every single weekend. For nine months, I never tried to kiss a girl, even when I absolutely knew they wanted to kiss me. Right? I had the end of one of these dates, I walked the girl back home, and I was just talking, I went like this, just as a gesture, and she's like, don't you think a handshake's a little too formal for us? Meaning like, please kiss me. I'm like, you're right, have a good day. <laughs> right? So again, I didn't really even want to win. And then finally, like the first, first girl I kissed, I slept with. Because I needed her to be that into me, and I needed to be that frustrated. Like, basically, she was super into me, super into me. The entire date, I'm sitting there going, like, I need to kiss her. I need to kiss her. I need to kiss her. Finally, she got in her car, and she started the car and was about to leave. And I was so pissed off at myself. I'm like, fuck, ugh. And I knocked on the car window. And she's like, what? And at that moment, it was more awkward to stand there and do nothing than to kiss her. So I kissed her. <laughs> and then the next day, she came, and we had sex. So um, finally, finally, I did that. But for most of that time, my outcome wasn't sex. My outcome was not having a good experience with a girl. What was it? It was proving to myself that I was a real man, proving to myself that I was attractive. And when that's your outcome, being persistent is needy. Having killer instinct is needy because it's all about you. It's all about you taking value from her. However, again, if the outcome is I want to have a good experience, um, I'm good in bed, I want to have a great time with you, I want to bring you into my world, etc. If it's actually a positive thing, now you can be extremely persistent without being needy. Now you can have a lot of killer instinct and now you can like take a lot of risks and it will be forgiven and it's not needy. All right? um, just as, as an analogy for this is uh, the salesman. Right? Say, that you had, say that you had two car salesmen, they're, they're selling like BMWs. Right? You're at the BMW sales lot. Um, and I, you don't know anything else about these two salesmen, but you see them go home at the end of the night, and when, when they get in their cars, one of them drives a Mercedes and one of them drives a BMW. <laughs> Who do you think sells more BMWs? Anyone? The guy with the BMW. The guy with the BMW, one guy, yeah, exactly. Why? Because he believes in the product he's selling, right? If you believe in the product you're selling, if you believe in yourself and you believe you're a good experience for the girl, and you convince yourself of that, then it's going to be a lot easier for you to be persistent, a lot easier for you to not be needy. Does that make sense? So that's very, that's very critical. It all depends where it's coming from. And there is no like, there's no such thing almost as like too persistent if it's coming from the wrong place. 
And there's no such thing as like persistence that's excusable at all if it's coming from the wrong place. But uh, what is when I want to fuck you, but I didn't want to come too needy and mm -hmm. that's my goal. <laughs> right, so if the reason you want to fuck her and you're, it, it comes off as, if it's perceived as I want to fuck you for me, then it's going to be very hard for her not to get turned off. If you say I want to fuck her for oh, us, for us, now you can be very persistent. So for example, when I was, when I was very needy and outcome dependent, one particular case, um, this case I slept with um, five girls this week already. I was going out on boot camp. And I walked up to a girl and I said, hi, I'm Todd. And she goes, fuck off. <laughs> and I was like, whoa, all I said was hi. She goes, yeah, well, it was a very demanding hi. And what was happening there was I had slept with so many girls, I felt so entitled that basically I just assumed she was going to sleep with me. So when I said hi, what I was really saying is, hi, I'm cooler than you. I'm not going to do anything cool or fun with you, but just because I'm cooler than you, I think you should fuck me. And it won't be enjoyable for you, but you should fuck me because I'm high value. <laughs> right? And so that's how it came off, and she immediately rejected me. On the other hand, I had a situation in Vegas where I'd had a really amazing interaction with this girl for half an hour. And then I did some things to mess it up, which we won't get into exactly because it's too long for the story. But then she starts yelling at me and screaming at me and telling me, fuck off. I hate you. I want to punch you. You're ruining my Vegas trip. I want to call the bouncer on you. I liked you, but now I don't. Will you please go? For like 20 minutes, she did this. And, but I just like laughed it off, stayed chill, stayed cool. I had like joked around with her, messed around with her. And eventually her friend was like, are you an idiot? Stop it. And then she's like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. She came home and had sex with me. Okay? Now that's extremely persistent, right? The first time is no persistence at all. It's one attempt. It's immediately rejected because the vibe is it's all about me, it's not about you. The second time, because we had a really good interaction, because I knew what was possible between us and I knew it was good, and I was like, stop being silly, like be normal, et cetera, et cetera. And I really was because it was a good interaction, because I had enjoyed her before and I knew that she was being so silly. Um, in that case, I was able to push it through. And so the, it really does come down to the motivation and the reason behind. And that's always on display. It's always on display. It's in your, in your voice, in your body language, in your eye contact. They can tell what you're thinking. They can tell where it's coming from. And so it's super, super important, right? It's not always about what you do. It's about how you do what you do, right? And so sometimes you can be zero persistent. It's a problem. Sometimes you can be massively persistent, and it's not. It all depends on the vibe. Is this on topic? Yeah. Okay, yeah. How do you uh, cultivate this mindset? Do you have any tips? For um, I have a few. Uh, first tip is, and I encourage everybody to do this, everybody in game should do this at some point. Sit down and make a list of the 10 reasons why you're the best decision your girl could make. Why is the girl better off with you? Right? That's one thing you can do. Second thing you can do, and this is something I do, make a commitment that if at all possible, you leave a girl better than you found her. If at all possible, you make it a good experience for a girl, right? Here's a little thing, um, and this is, you could say it's stupid, but you could also say it's not. So um, say that I take a girl home, and she seems super down, super on, really likes me, and I tell her, you know, um, so I'm gonna, I'll, I'll take you back if, you don't, if, you're, if you're not cool, if, if you want to leave at any time. Not only can you leave, I'll, get your, I'll cover your taxi back, right? And say I bring the girl home, and... Uh, you know, we do it, you know, we escalate a little bit, we have LMR, she doesn't end up sleeping with me, and maybe even she gets a little mean at the end. Like, maybe, maybe even undeservedly, she gets a little mean at the end. And then she's like, I want my taxi money back. And then you find out it's like a 50 euro taxi ride. All right? Now, on the one hand, um, you could make an argument to say, fuck off, you're, you're being a bitch, you don't get your taxi money, leave. Right? And I certainly could give you some pretty good arguments for that. And in terms of like, sort of in terms of entitlement, in terms of being icy, there are some, some good reasons for that. Um, and a lot of people would say that what I do in this case is too nice. But what I do, I think, invariably or almost invariably, if I promise the girl the money, I give her the fucking money. Right? And the reason for that is, one, that I'm too nice. But two... It's that on, an, on a certain level, the next time that I'm telling a girl, I'll get your cab ride back, I actually believe it. And she actually believes it, and it's actually genuine. And in my own mind, 
I am the good person that will take care of her. Right? So in my mind, when a girl comes with me, she's in my care, she's in a good place, nothing bad's ever going to happen to her. And I think in a very subtle way, it comes through in my actions. In a very subtle way, girls trust me more for it. Right? And to be fair, girls trust me way more than they should. Like way, I mean, like <laughs> not, not way more than they should given me because I am trustworthy, but way more than they should given the information they have. Right? Um, I mean, I'm able a lot of times for boot camp students, like they're having a decent set, I'll walk over, say like five words, and they'll be like, hey, come on, let's go. And the girl's like, oh, I trust him, let's go. Right? And part of it is, you know, good mannerisms, good game, et cetera, et cetera. But part of it is the fact that I think the fact that I actually do take care of the girls that come home with me. I actually do take care of the girls in my life to a certain extent. Now, not to a ridiculous extent. Not to a ridiculous extent, right? If, um, if a girl truly fucks me over and it's truly not my fault and I didn't specifically promise her something and she comes and asks me, fuck off, bitch. Absolutely not. But if I did say I'll do something, I do make good on that promise. And I'm actually, I'm actually true to that not only with girls but with guys and with everybody to the best of my ability. right? So I try and have that integrity in my life. And because of that, I think in subtle ways, it does come across. Also, another reason to have integrity in your life is you never know when two people who you don't think know each other will meet up. Right? You never know when um, your reputation could be to your advantage. So it's good to keep your promises in general as well. But that's another part of it is, is have that integrity. Right? So one, why are you the best decision for a girl? Understand why. Know the reasons why. Number two, have that integrity and commitment that you will be a good experience for and you will do the best by her and follow through with it. That's going to help you in subtle ways. <coughs> and then the third is make yourself awesome. right? So you, you've given the 10 reasons why you're the best decision a girl can make, but keep improving yourself. Continually improve yourself and continually um, improve yourself in terms of her experience. Get better in bed. If you know, if you absolutely know you're good in bed, then you're going to be able to look at a girl in the end and be like, hey, come on with me. You're going to have a good time. Right? As opposed to if you know you're bad in bed. Like if you were like, you know, when I was a virgin, didn't know what the fuck I was doing. Right? Inherently, I'm sure, there was a little piece of me that's like, okay, let's take this girl home, but I, I probably will disappoint her. Or I probably won't know what I'm doing. And that comes through as well. Right? So keep building your confidence and keep building yourself not just in game, but in other areas of life. Does that make sense? So those are the best things I would say is to, um, to generally just enhance yourself as a man and enhance yourself in terms of the experience you're giving her. And that's going to come through, excuse me, congruently. The other thing that will help it is not only doing that, but getting the feedback from doing it. So if, for example, for me, um, I take pride in being good in bed. Right? I, I do take pride in it. Here's a, here's a question. So you pull a girl for a, for a one-night stand, and... Um, you know, you know it's going to be a one-night stand. You know you're never going to see her again. You're both traveling. Um, you have sex for a bit, and you kind of, you kind of like, or get the, getting to that point, you'd kind of just like to come, right? Now, I usually either hold off, pull out for a second, take my time, make it a good experience for her, and then come later, or I come and then I like make her come too, right? It's a subtle thing. It's a subtle thing. But again, the next time I'm pulling a girl, the next time I'm taking a girl home. I know, and because I know, she knows a little bit that it's going to be a good experience for her. Does that make sense? Now, could you be good at game without all this stuff? Yeah, you could. Could you develop this in other ways? Yeah, you could. But I think it all helps a little bit. Every little bit, I think, helps just a little bit. Right? So those are the things. Is know that it's going to be a good experience for her. Know that you're amazing. Um, and believe it. If you have belief in your product, she'll believe in your product. If you don't believe in your product, then you're like the con artist. Right? That's the, what's the difference between a salesman and a con artist? Right? It's a lot of the same techniques. A lot of the same techniques. But the salesman is selling something they believe that's actually value for the person. The con artist is selling something they think is not value for the person. And here would be the true test. The true test of integrity on that, um, and this is, this is a tough one, and in game I'm not even necessarily saying you should do it, but the true test would be this. The person who's like truly the salesman, not the con artist, if they really know their product is bad for someone, they would actually tell them not to do it. Right? There have been situations like that for me as well. When there's a girl that's really into me, but she's clearly emotionally damaged, like clearly crazy, and it will clearly fuck her up, in that case, I will sometimes just be like, no, 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 this isn't a good idea, no thanks. Right? And there have been times that that has saved my ass, to be fair. Right? It's, it's saved me from some fucking crazy girls in some crazy situations in my life. Um, but there's value in that as well. 
this value in when it's when legitimately if you going home with a girl would be bad for her i.e like she is married and there's no way in fuck that you can have sex with her without her husband finding out you probably should not have sex with her right that's probably good for you as well right things like that right so be smart about your situations as well um, but yeah, that's all over the place, off topic, et cetera. The big thing is do anything and everything you can to believe in your product. And that is figure out the reasons why you should believe in it, um, change your product in such a way to make it beneficial, and then continually be improving yourself. Those are the best ways to convey that value overall.